So we're in a little mini series on relationships. And uh, this week uh, we were talked about singleness and divorce. Now, uh, there's only so much I can cover in three minutes. And uh, because these are recaps, I can only really cover a couple of points on each. So I can't cover everything, but a couple of points hopefully on each. First up, singleness. Now in Paul's culture, at the time when he uh, was writing uh, many of the letters of the New Testament, and obviously of Jesus' day as well, uh, getting married was the norm. In fact, you were expected to get married. That was what you uh, you came into the world for. You to get married, to have children, and to repopulate things and help carry on uh, the family line and provided for you in old age, of course. Now, Paul writes in 1 Corinthians 7 and says, but it's okay to be single. And yeah, it is okay to be single. In fact, the church then took that, the early church certainly took that a step further and they said, you know what, um, we're, we're going to esteem singleness above marriage. And uh, obviously in Catholicism, they say you have to be uh, single to be a priest. And many people do have the gift of singleness, the gift of celibacy, and it is OK to be single. Many Christian leaders, significant Christians, people in life have been single. And what matters most, of course, is their relationship with God rather than uh, their marriage status so it's okay to be single and in there 1 Corinthians 7 Paul really says is embrace the season you're in so em embrace your singleness uh, especially if, perhaps if you if you really do want to get married and I I'm not giving dating advice uh, but embrace your situation embrace where you are in life embrace your singleness embrace friendships in particular embrace other single people and have other good friendships, other married people that you're friends with, or people of different ages, embrace those relationships because we are created for relationships. And so even though you're not married or you may want to be married, um, embrace relationships, seek after friendships where you can share uh, and be intimate with other people. Now divorce, a, a tricky subject for some and uh, just a couple of things to say on that. First off, um, Divorce is meant as a way of moving on. You know, God allowed Moses to give people a certificate of divorce to allow them to move on because their relationship had broken down. Now, God doesn't hate divorce. He hates what creates divorce. He hates the broken down relationships. He hates the fact when we're, when we're not committed, when we're not faithful, uh, when we've not looked after the other person. That's what God hates. And yes, marriage is, is created for that picture of our relationship with God, a relationship of uh, committed behaviour and faithfulness, etc. But we are hard-hearted people and, and we find these relationships really difficult and there is abuse and there is difficulty and there is adultery and all kinds of things. Now, yes, we have, we have forgiveness and we want to work at relationships we really do with God's help. But there does often come a time, especially when there's abuse and things like that, where we have to say a relationship has broken down and it is irretrievable. And divorce allows people then uh, to tie that mess up and to move on in life. That's the reason for Moses giving the certificate. It allowed people to move on, especially women, especially in that sort of patriarchal, male-dominated society. It provided for them and allowed them to move on in life. And it's the same for today. Yes, God wants committed, faithful relationships, but he also has grace and forgiveness for people. That If they're in such a situation, you do have the grace to move on. Uh, through divorce and to move on and yes the most important thing is your relationship with God and you know allowing yourself um, to to be forgiven to forgive yourself uh, to forgive your partner but to move on ultimately uh, in your relationship with God and with others